This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Landmark College in beautiful Putney, Vermont, the college of choice for students who learn differently. Learn more about how we help students with ADHD succeed in college at lcdistraction.org. It's a, a good reminder for all of us that your past doesn't determine your future. You know, where you come from doesn't determine where you'll go. And we all have, every breath of the day, uh, a choice to change, a, a choice to ask for help, because my journey of breaking the cycle required a lot of help, help mm-hmm. from professionals, from therapists, from friends, family. Uh, but we all have a choice of what type of human, what, t- what kind of person we want to become. And I find that to be inspiring. I find that to be tremendously hopeful. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell with an episode of my podcast called Distraction. Today, I am indeed thrilled, honored, tickled, and just jumping for joy to have one of the real uh, pioneer stalwart members of the people who want to advance the cause of humanity, uh, particularly people who are not just like everyone else. Uh, namely, Jonathan Mooney, the author of numerous books, but most recently, a book with the distinctive title, Normal Sucks. <laughs> and and uh, I've read this book and loved it. It's a really brave, candid, funny, sad, and above all else, true account uh, of Jonathan's life, and and but it's representative of for so many millions of people who, you know, just weren't Joe or Jill normal. And uh, he's done a beautiful job of depicting it in a way that's never preachy but always persuasive and vivid. So it's with enormous pleasure that I welcome you, Jonathan, to Distraction. Oh, Ned, I can't tell you what a what an honor and uh, privilege it is to be with you and uh, to be a part of your work. You are a uh, mentor and role model of mine, so thank you very well, much. Thank you. Very kind of you to say that. Well, tell our, our listeners, you know, how uh, how did this book come, how did this book get uh, written and why? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not the normal guy. <laughs> it starts, starts there. Uh, uh, you know, I was the kid who uh, spent a lot of the day chilling out with the janitor in the hallway. And uh, I was the kid that spent a lot of the day on a first-name basis with Shirley, the receptionist in the principal's office. And uh, I was the kid who uh, spent a lot of time hiding in the bathroom to escape reading out loud with tears streaming down my face. You know, I was the proverbial uh, square peg that did not fit the round hole of school. Mm. Uh, I was eventually diagnosed uh, with a continuum of language-based learning differences, dyslexia, dysgraphia, and others, diagnosed mm-hmm. with ADD. Uh, and I remember the, the day I was diagnosed, and uh, I turned to my mom, who's quite an advocate and character in my life, and I said, hey, Ma, uh, am I normal? You know, and my mom looked at me and said, you know, Jonathan, normal sucks. Ah. And uh, that that was a profound moment in my life because I was being made to feel that different was deficient. And uh, I was subsequently on a downward spiral in my sense of self and value as a human being. Yeah. And for my mom to flip the script and challenge the idea that we all should be the same and to tell me there was nothing wrong with me, I had challenges uh, like we all do, but I was a valuable human being, uh, that put me on a different path. So that's the origin for this project in particular. What a wonderful moment when she said that. How old were you? I was nine. I was wow. nine. You know, my mom, you know, she's not a tall woman. She's she's like 4'11", uh, in high heels on her tippy toes, and she <laughs> has a very high-pitched voice like Minnie Mouse, and she curses like a truck driver. And uh, you did not want cursing Minnie Mouse uh, in your face if you were doing wrong by her son. But that's where she always was. You know, She was the person in my life who, who helped me uh, rebuild a more positive sense of self when I was surrounded by uh, messages about what was wrong with me. 
you know, you're, the way you describe her cursing Minnie Mouse in your face. Uh, this is this is what how Jonathan writes is very vivid, and you you really have a gift in the writing field. So you know, so you went through high school where in California was it or? Yeah, I grew up in I grew up in and around LA with a with a little detour for high school in in, uh, in Colorado. And you managed to get through high school, correct? By the skin of my teeth, Ned, as is uh, too too often the story. You know, I heard yeah. um, I heard it all. You know, I'd heard I'd I heard I'd be a uh, high school dropout. I I was told I'd be unemployed. I was told I'd end up in jail or incarcerated. You know, I I kind of beat those odds, man. I I ended up uh, not being a high school dropout, but being a college graduate. Graduated from from Brown University, class of two thousand. And uh, now, how did you manage to get into Brown? Uh, this was before uh, people paid to get in, you know. <laughs> before people paid to get in, you know, my journey to Brown was uh, was one of, of first and foremost transferring to Brown, and that's an important point for all of your listeners. You know, we mm-hmm. have a very kind of narrow uh, notion of what is a pathway to a successful adult life. Uh, you know, young people get the message that it's all over after ninth grade. You know, <laughs> it's all downhill, and. Right. Um, I transferred. I transferred from a four-year college that I went to to be primarily a soccer player, uh, like John Irving and others uh, with learning differences. Athletics was my haven. Uh, mm-hmm. Soccer was my road. Uh, and then uh, I decided that I was maybe more than a soccer player and uh, dedicated myself to being an advocate for my rights for accommodations at my first university, a right that's often uh, denied and ignored uh, for many young people with differences in higher education and beyond. And I had a renaissance, and I transferred to Brown. And the good news is when you transfer, they don't look at high school grades, nor they look at your SAT scores. Um, They look at your uh, performance at that institution of higher education you transferred from. And uh, I got a do-over, and that mattered a lot. Hmm. And where did the the courage and the vision come from to do that? So when I got to LMU, uh, I was very much in the... uh, LD ADHD closet, so to speak. What's LMU? Oh, Lyle Marymount University, the university oh, okay. I went to before okay. Brown. Uh, okay. And I was very much in that sort of hiding pass as normal phase. I'm only an athlete. That's all I'm good at. Don't tell anyone about my learning differences. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was exposed to a professor there. Uh, never forget this man. His name was Father Young, Jesuit priest, Shakespeare scholar. And I met him at a orientation event in which he was talking about uh, the literature department, but more importantly, he was talking about uh, his own experience of learning differently. He was out there and proud and open about his own struggles. He talked about his own uh, alcoholic father. My father struggled with substance abuse my whole life. And I went up to him afterwards and I said, you know, hey, Father Young, I think I might want to be an English major here at, at LMU, and, uh, but I don't know if I can do it. And he said, why, why don't you think you can do it? And I told him, I said, you know, so many people told me I could never even make it to college, much less be an English major. And Father Young said, hey, you have to prove those bastards wrong. Mm. And that was a moment of taking anger that I had that was consuming me and using that anger to fuel me instead. And that's Mm. when I became an advocate for my rights for accommodations. And that's when I got the idea of uh, finding the right educational environment for me. Not the place to be a soccer player, but the place to be transformed by my learning. And with Father Young's support, and others, of course, uh, I uh, went on a very different journey than the one uh, predicted for me. I'll say you did. I'll say you did. He's a great character in your in your book, by the way. He, uh... Hey, wherever Father Young is, you know, give him a shout-out and, and give Mr. R a shout-out and Mr. Starkey a shout-out. You know, those are the people who I proved right. Those are the people who uh, believed in uh, my capacity, believed in every human being's capacity, and uh, uh, poured themselves into me. And and they are a testament to the power of meaningful adults in young people's lives. You know, Ned, you wrote a book uh, a long time ago, and, and, you know, we we go way back. And uh, it's one of my favorite books ever written by any writer, Uh, and it's a book called Connect. And it's about mm. the power of connection and relationship. And mm. Father Young and others in my life um, were testaments to that power. And more than ever, we need all of us to, 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 to uh, stand up 
and build relationships with the human beings in our life because we are more disconnected than ever. Oh, it's so true. And and, and you're a great connector. Um, we have a, a one a person we share who who believed in us and believes in us in Jill Neerum, don't we? We do. And, you know, uh, your listeners, you know this, but I think your listeners need to know it as well. When I transferred to Brown, uh, I met another transfer student. Uh, his name is David Cole. And David Cole was out and proud about his differences, and we became friends. And we came up with this absurd idea at the time to write a book about our experiences. He had transferred from Landmark College. He had been homeless for a while. He had uh, uh, experienced substance abuse. And we decided to write a book. And so uh, we got it in our mind that if we could get the support of a luminary in the field, it would help us uh, sell the book to a publisher. And through uh, uh, relationships, we got your telephone number at your summer house. Yeah. And I will never forget that for yeah. one summer, me and Dave relentlessly called your house, and we would get voicemail, we would get no answer, and then <laughs> one day we got you on the phone. And David Cole uh, shared his story, our book idea for 30 seconds. You put down the phone, you came back and said, here's my agent, call her. Uh-huh. And I am forever grateful for that moment. Uh, because that agent, Jill Neerum, who you just mentioned, is yeah. my agent to this day. That yeah. book we were talking about is the book called Learning Outside the Lines that set me on the journey that I'm on to this day. So I'm grateful for your support, and I am so grateful that you uh, eventually got the restraining order on Dave and I lifted <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and allowed me to join you on the program today, man. No, it was a, it was a great <laughs> privilege. I'm so glad you tracked me down, and, you know, it was wonderful. And then Jill you know, jumped right in, and it's so great you're still with her, and, and she agented Normal Sucks, right? She did, she did, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it's just a testament to the importance of, all, importance of all of us taking risks on people, you know? Yes, um, yes. And, and believing in, uh, in, in people's capacity and uh, being vulnerable enough uh, to to uh, go out on a limb for, for somebody. And uh, you were that for me. You, you were that for David Cole. I know you've been that for uh, millions of other uh, people in different ways. But it's a reminder that we all should be that for somebody. And that if we all woke up and took a risk on somebody, uh, believed in their potential before other people believed in their potential, that we would have a, a radically transformed and we'd have a much better world. Oh, it's so true. And, and and not to hold back out of fear. I mean, you know, we all fear rejection, but what have you got to lose? You you know, yeah. you know, and, and to persist. I mean, you hear that over and over and over again, the person who just, you know, just keeps at it and then they they get what they're looking for. And you you so believed in your mission and you still do uh, for good reason, you know, and and uh but you, do you think, what kind of response have you had to Normal Sucks? I've been overwhelmed by it, um, to be frank with you. You know, this is my third time around the merry-go-round, a uh, book called Running Outside the Lines, a book called The Short Bus, and, and now this book. And I think what um, has been so overwhelming, um, uh, moving, and I mean it in the, in the truest sense of, of that idea of moving, uh, you know, very intense emotions, um, is the the number of people who still uh, feel deficient and are told that uh, their differences make them less valuable as human beings. You know, when I started uh, talking about my journey after Learning Outside the Lines came out ago, that was 20 years ago, I thought I'd be telling the bad old day stories, you know. Oh, hey, uh, I used to grow up uh, chilling out with C-Spot Run in the Bluebird Reading Group. Oh, wasn't that the bad old days? And, you know, from the first talk I gave uh, 20 years ago to the talk I gave 15 minutes ago, uh, I still hear stories every day of people being demeaned for being different. And I have to say, the stories of self-harm, and the stories of, of suicide ideation and attempts uh, and suicide themselves uh, increase every single year from the neurodiverse. So I think we have a, a crisis on our hands. 
Um, I know Normal Sucks has uh, touched people in the moment of that crisis. It's moved me, and it's just reaffirmed that this has been my life's work for the past 20 years. Uh, this will be my life's work for the next 20 years. Oh, and, and, and well beyond that, well beyond that, you, in, in addition to writing, you, you became a, a husband and a father. Is that correct? I am the proud father of uh, three, and uh, my wife and I have um, been together for 23 years now. Uh, wow. Met as undergraduates in uh, college um, together the, the whole time since then. And, um, you know, those are the things that I am most proud of. You know, I'm, I'm proud that I could uh, be in a healthy relationship. Uh, you know, I write about my father a lot in, in this new book um, in, a, in a very vulnerable and, and, and honest way. Uh, my father was a, a source of chaos and, and destruction in, in my family, um, functional alcoholic, substance abuser, um, chronic bankruptcies uh, in our house, uh, financial insecurity, and, and verbal, verbal abuse. Um, and I thought that I was going to be somebody doomed to recreate those patterns uh, in my life, in my relationships. And uh, I haven't. Um, and uh, I uh, am not that person. And it's a, um, a good reminder for all of us that your past doesn't determine your future. Uh, you know, where you come from doesn't determine where you'll go. And we all have every breath of the day uh, a choice to change, a, a choice to ask for help, because my journey of breaking the cycle required a lot of help, help mm -hmm. from professionals, from therapists, from friends, family. Uh, but we all have a choice of what uh, type of human, what, what kind of person we want to become. And I find that to be inspiring. I find that to be tremendously hopeful. Well, you're, uh, Jonathan, you, you really are an inspiration to so many others. And, you know, it's, a, it's been a long time coming, but it, it looks like, People are getting the message that most of the good that's done in this world are are people who have different brains. You know, same brains don't lead to progress. It's the different brains that do, and and you. Uh, it also can lead to suffering, as you as you write about that final scene with your father is one of the most moving scenes I've ever read. It was uh, that alone should get people to go out and buy the book. It's just a beautifully written scene that. Uh, I won't spoil by telling listeners what happens, but the name of the book is Normal Sucks, and Jonathan Mooney is an heroic man who really, uh, you know, lays it all out in, in this memoir and and uh, in, a, in a way that is helpful to other people. He doesn't write to shock or do anything other than share a story that... Uh, is tremendously moving and helpful and inspiring. And now that he's happily married with three wonderful children, he's finally able to, you know, uh, reap the rewards of it all. I can't thank you enough for coming on my, my podcast. I, I'm sure our listeners are equally grateful. I can't thank you enough for having me, Ned, but more importantly for the work that you do because you have led the movement of celebrating people with differences and understanding that people with differences are valuable, not despite their differences, but because of them. And we need the different more than ever to get us out of the mess that we're in. You're, you're so right. You're so right. Well, amen to that, as they say. We have to have you on again sometime. Uh, thank you. Thank you for today and uh, take care, be well and uh, carry on. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, well, that's it for today. Honestly, Jonathan Mooney is one of the best people I know. He really uh, is just a, a giver and, a, and, a, and just a man who's lived a very difficult, genuine life. And, and now he's able to share what he's learned. And in a very entertaining way, I promise you, his memoir is not a hand wringer or preachy, anything like that. It's a wonderful stories told by a wonderful man. I, I recommend it to you. Normal Sucks by Jonathan Mooney, M-O-O-N-E-Y. Thanks to Jonathan, and thanks to you all for listening. Remember, please, please, please send us your comments and questions. 
by recording a voice memo or by writing an email and sending it to connect at distractionpodcast.com. That's connect at distractionpodcast.com. Distraction is a production of Sounds Great Media. The podcast is recorded and edited by the unbelievably talented, buxom Pat Keogh, who often wears a cowboy hat. And our producer is the slim and brilliant and absolutely unbelievably helpful, imaginative, pioneering Sarah Gurton.